aka guys this is the dark match for the week ending in september 6 2012 i'm the revolver man and i'm digi fox i'm the fox that rocks your socks i'm duo's angel and i need coffee i'm the lone warrior um and well this is what the iron shake is tweaking that uh, tw- t- t- tweeting tweeting <laughs> tweeting <laughs> He's probably <laughs> too if we know the Iron Sheik. Yes, yes. Him, him, him. <laughs> fuck, I am hungry for the Sheesh Cup, but if you don't give a fuck, go fuck yourself. <laughs> what? I didn't know he liked Shish Kebabs. Did Sheik just tell everyone to fuck off if they don't care what his food is? <laughs> I think so. <laughs> Well, maybe we should care because when every time he gets fatter, his belly button looks more and more like a baby's coming out of it. <laughs> oh. Thanks for the mental image. You know, I'm actually kind of glad that, that Kane went back to the uh, to having a top. It's, I, I could have sworn he was getting he was starting to get that way too. <laughs> Anyways, this isn't about WWE. This is about oh. Impact. Oh. And this is this was this was a return to form for Impact, and that's oh. not a good. <laughs> was it ever? Hooray! <laughs> See, this because... is my first Impact after a long hiatus. <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh. And it, it was if you've never left. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, you basically missed that month and a half when it was really getting good, minus a couple of segments. This is back to form. Yeah, it really feels like I've missed absolutely nothing. (laughs) Well, what you did miss was a stupid crack baby. That's it? And everything's going on. They've been good. (laughs) They've been good, minus the crack baby. Why they killed that angle? It wasn't she's because it was the... horrible and mildly offensive? No, it's because the actress playing the crack hooker, I don't want to say the other word because that's kind of offensive, her other acting job showed up on YouTube and angry TNA Mark started bashing her, so she quit to get away from TNA and TNA Marks. Okay. Yeah, uh, you know what her job was? She was olive oil at Universal Studios. <laughs> Oh, ah, oh Going Popeye, baby. come and rescue me. I would love to see Popeye beat the fuck out of somebody on TNA. <laughs> I st- stand all I can stand and I can't stand no more. Give but me some spinach. Yeah, yeah, the problem is he sees a ju- he sees a can of green stuff, but it's from Hardy's locker room and he ain't going all spinach <laughs> on anybody. <laughs> He's oh, like, oh, oh. Oh, well, if it's from Hardy's locker. Oh, no. Okay. Um, but yeah, um, that's enough that's of that. that. Oh, um, impact this week. Um, so yes, we start with the, the match, which is nice. After, yeah, the, after a decent enough recap. Yeah, so they, we got Jeff Hardy versus Samoa Joe. Jeff Hardy fighting to get into the final four, and Samoa Joe fighting to get the top spot, which allows him to dictate what his uh, opponent will be. And once again, to praise TNA, this Bound for Glory series is so much better than last year's Bound for Glory series. Like, that's hard. <laughs> yeah, I was actually Excellent wondering sense. about that. Like, they the could have ma- had the magical? arena explode and it would have been better. Come on. <laughs> Ouch. Hey, 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 I give credit where credit is due and this is where credit is due. Yeah, I don't know. I'm I'm agreeing. This year's way better. But it's still not saying much. (laughs) Hogan could have won, and it would have been better. (laughs) That's how bad it is. I am still surprised that we have not seen Hogan as champion yet. I am legitimately surprised about that. Anyways, Jeff Hardy and Samoa Joe. This is... uh, It started out promising. (laughs) It's... It was a pretty basic sort of thing. Samoa Joe was playing the heel, despite the fact he isn't a heel anymore, I guess. But he was basically beating on Jeff Hardy until Jeff Hardy uh, 
got him with the whisper in the wind or whatever the hell that stupid move is where he does a corkscrew, uh, corkscrew flip off the top of the ring or top of the uh, turnbuckle and hits Joe's arm. And Joe sells it like this really hurts because apparently his arm is injured, which was news to me. That it, did it was... not... Oh, that that actually looked really bad. Yeah, Jeff Hardy he missed. He missed. <laughs> he missed he... very obviously. Yeah, then... they're, they're still just trying to sell him being whacked in the arm by Magnus uh, three weeks. Oh, that's right. Fuck it. We'll get to Magnus. We'll get to Magnus. But anyway... <laughs> So after that, Joe's still on his arm and he's fighting. And then, uh, out of nowhere, out of nowhere, after a twist of fate, Jeff Hardy locks in. The devastating, the terrifying, the the body-destroying headlock. I, to be <laughs> fair, I think he was going for something. It kind of looked like he was going for a, uh, something like an anaconda device because he did have the... Joe's injured arm trapped it, it, well, it trapped it between his arm. They even commented our, on our like arm and sick. headlock or something like that. Like well, they commented that it was some like well, he was hitting that, in two different places. Right. That's what they were trying. What happened was is that he basically had a pretty simple headlock in and Joe tapped. But the thing is the announcers were summing it like his arm was what happened. So well, that's I'm, again they he, he he's supposed to have had his Right, that's the arm was supposed to be in that, but it was not because Jeff Hardy is a meth head fuck up. No, no, his arm was in his legs. It was just. Oh yeah, I, I was like, I could that, clearly see it. I didn't see. All I saw was the headlock. He had the no, headlock, but tell. he also had his arm in uh, caught between his uh, between his legs, like he was. We could argue if it actually looked like it might have in any way hurt. <laughs> yeah, if anything, it was kind of like watching set. A certain uh, wrestler from another company put in, say, an STF. <laughs> well, there, there you go. Joe just tapped out to Jeff freaking yeah, Hardy. Jeff Hardy. I'm, I'm amazed I didn't hear California explode with Magpie's rage. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, see, I, I, I'm not, I'm not condoning that. You know, Jeff beat Samoa Joe by fucking submission. Oh, I'm just saying, you know, it's I can kind of. I saw what they were trying to do, even if Jeff fucked it up. Mm. But yeah, J- Jeff Hardy wins, so he gets his... Uh, he's pretty much guaranteed a spot in the... Uh, he-, he gets his 10 points. Although they really fucked up the point totals uh, when they were showing him later on. Because he he had, he had 50 points going into the match. Or he had, like... Yeah, he had 50 going into the match, and then at the end of the match... After the match, they showed him with 59 points. It was like, you dumbasses. <laughs> <laughs> Basic math, something TNA can't handle. But, um, yeah, uh, Jeff wins. Samoa Joe does, is eternally second place now um, to Storm. So we know that Storm's going to be, you know, is going to be picking whoever he wants to fight. And uh, Chrissy Hemi decides she's going to try to do an interview. Oh, no, wait, sorry. Sorry, I forgot something. Uh, video package. Yeah, there's a video package of the Aces and Eight stuff where uh, they jump, uh, where the camera guy? The evil, co- like, uh, he's a grip and he was a uh, cable layer. The evil cable layer. Evil Joe Dirt jumps him from the <laughs> <laughs> Oh, God. Oh, wow. Evil Joe Dirt. I like that. That's very appropriate for. Well, I Let's forgot. Earl, I forgot. My name is Earl. The I forgot Earl's name from My Name Is Earl. So, Vicky. Yeah. B- basically, he jumps. He, he whacks Aries from behind with a flapjack. I'm pretty sure it was a flapjack. It was supposed to be a flapjack. It was something small. It, did, it didn't look a like pancake. No, no, kind of um a, a blackjack. Oh, that's it. Yeah, the uh, the sock. The old sock, as uh, it tends to come off on TV. Yeah, the sock with an orange in it, you know. But, um, so they show, show a recap of Ares going down from that after beating up uh, Big Mask Guy number three. And, um, the cut backstage, and Ares is talking to Hogan, going, How much longer is this shit going, gonna go on, man? I'm tired of being jumped by people. And Hogan goes all, well, well, I'm pissed for that. 
<laughs> yeah, that's what that's the first thing. I don't is. like I, I don't like being beaten up in wrestling. That's that's also my style. Hogan um, says that you know most of these guys, yet we have no idea who they are. This asshole was on the was part of the TV crew, so they know exactly who he is. And Hogan's got got him. And it's, he basically tells Ares... Ding! Massive felony another one. Kidnapping. This will continue as we go along. <laughs> yeah, so oh, Hogan will basically... Ever. <laughs> Hogan tells him, basically, get the information out of him. If he doesn't want to talk, break his legs. Ding! If he's Massive really... felony another two. Threatening See, bodily no, harm. I missed, I missed all of that. Like, I missed all the specific details. I just knew that they had a guy to go bother. Yeah, and then uh, his Aries, Aries says something, and Hogan goes, well, then break his other leg. I was like, God, I hope he doesn't have more than two. <laughs> He's like, a three-legged ant creature. No, 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 no. I, I was going to go for the obvious uh, tripod joke, but... Oh. <laughs> but uh, anyway, we, we go from that to uh, ringside, where Christy Hemi has decided she wants to talk to Samoa Joe. This can in no way go on wrong. stage interview. That's Consider not suspicious or in well. any way a setup. Yeah, so, Considering uh, that it's, the show is now live, and so they had to show the video package, that means Joe was just standing out on the stage for about five minutes before anything else happened. Plus, com- oh, shit, that's like plus, com- oh yeah, damn. Poor <laughs> Joe. Uh, <laughs> so yeah, the crowd and yeah. Joe are just standing there waiting for something to happen for about up to possibly 10 minutes. You think Daniel Bryan had it bad? (laughs) 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 um, um, Joe has like a DS he can play. Joe opens his mouth to say something and and Magnus comes out. And he's like, Joe, I know you just lost. Because, you know, we got to get Bruce Magnus back on the show after years of not using him. Yeah, he, he has to be a plot element. Well, he is a plot, and I just don't think it's the way that we're talking about. <laughs> plot ahead. is another word for ass. <laughs> Go ahead. So, but, so um, he, he basically goes on about why he attack, why he lost his temper with Joe. And that, you know, he was, when they were a tag team, he was great, but they were pretty good together. And he got... And then they were a great team, and then Joe got selfish and threw it all away. Magnus is like, I'm over it. I just want you to know I'm over it. I wish you the best. And Joe's well, that, fun- This would have made a lot more sense if Joe was knocked out of the tournament because of this, not just simply not taking the first place advantage the way that Magnus was talking. But, you know, what, what do I know? I've never DNA, been- brain yeah. jackasses. Come on. Mm-hmm. So, um, Joe, Magnus leaves, and Joe starts to, you know, continue the interview. When Magnus comes running back and just clocks from from behind and hits him in the arm, and then runs away, <laughs> possibly going whoop, 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 whoop. possibly. <laughs> Joe is now laid out. We we all also learn that Brutus Magnus's new gimmick is that he's a fucking troll. <laughs> yeah, yeah Joe that as in lives under a bridge and has fancy hair. Troll. You mad, bro? <laughs> if you would have said that, you need to get him chunks that says that across the ass. <laughs> <laughs> or that a shirt. So... I suppose a shirt would be the normal way to do that. No, across uh, the ass. That that would have been a, that would have been how a troll does it. Ah, uh, no, man. You know he's got the he's he likes the voodoo, man. I'm sorry. I never do that again. <laughs> Oh, okay, so right. we, we got our next segment, which is Hogan. More Hogan. One of these backstage segments that oh, shake God. the damage, reality TV style. And we got different tag teams, such as the, the two Robbies, Chavo and Hernandez, and, and uh, 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 <laughs> Kid uh, Cash, uh, and, Cash Gunner. and Gunner. The only thing missing from these segments was Hogan handing out roses to the people he throws out. <laughs> oh. Well, I'm more interested with the fact that apparently uh, Hernandez is no longer a racist Mexican. Oh, you, you see, what happened was, hey, look over there. <laughs> entire- what? Past alliances and characters. 
like that shit's ever important. Three month, it's, ba- it's basically the three month rule. Three months have passed. Nobody remembers what the fuck Hernandez was doing. So he's a good guy now. Hooray. But uh, jo- Hogan's basically going, give me a reason why you deserve a, t- a, a, the t- a title shot against um, Kaz and Daniels tonight. And Robbie and Robbie E immediately opens his mouth and goes, "Well, we're the young, we're the youngest guys here, you know. These guys are old as shit, and these guys are old as shit, and one's Gunner, so you know that. <laughs> and we we just deserve the chance, you know. We're a real tag team." And they all start arguing and bickering, and somebody po- points out the very good fact that hey, Chavo's been in the company for five weeks and has wrestled maybe two matches. <laughs> And he, the thing is, if he would have come in and cut a promo on WWE, he would be competing for the world title belt right now. But unfortunately, he chose to be classy. So he only gets the tag belts. Well, no, th- see, they've realized it's fucking Chavo. <laughs> what, do you think they thought they got Eddie at first? <laughs> they probably thought they got Chavo Sr. Come on. <laughs> Chavo oh. Classic? I want to put the belt on Chavo Classic. But um, the, the um, suddenly in comes AJ Styles, and he basically goes, "Hey, fuck these guys! I deserve it. Me." One guy deserves a tag team tag yes. <laughs> And Hogan looks at him and goes, "You're one guy. No, get out." He, even well, Hogan no, knows what's what. What I up. love is what Hogan exactly did was, you know what? I did say those things, didn't I? I did say that you could totally do it. Get the fuck out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he basically goes, "No, I can't have the tag team but bi- tag team titles on one guy. Get the fuck, get the fuck out!" And everyone's <laughs> like, "Bye, AJ." AJ said that. But what if I change the A to Angle because Kurt Angle held the both the tag belts at once? <laughs> yes, so that's Kurt Angle. Hmm, the rules that, are not applied. That, that seems like it will be relevant later. <laughs> <laughs> Indeed. So um, he, oh. he leaves. Uh, they're going to continue this later. But we go from one Hogan to the other. Oh, <laughs> oh my God. God. I had to actually stop watching because it's going, come on. So it, it truly is the Hogan Appreciation Hour at TNA nowadays. Yeah. So um, Brooks there. Or, yeah. Uh, Femme Hogan is there. And she, oh, and she goes, Tara, Tara's sister, you know, you, <laughs> hold on, you know, sister, Derek. I'm trying. <laughs> Let me tell you something, sister, you did a really great job at Open Fight Night Wrestling, Miss Tess Mocker, and I'm really glad I saw it, I'm really glad I brought in Taryn Terrell, that, so to be sure there won't be any more shady dealings with the referees, sister. So, here's what we're going to do, uh, you're going to have a title match. At uh, at the pay per view against Miss Desmacher to make sure that it wasn't a fluke and that you deserve to be a teacher. And this brings in Gail Kim who goes, Sister Jill, lady. I think that's how you'd say it, Sister Jill, lady, because Hogan goes, Brother Jack, dude. Yeah, I just I, I had to. I was having trying very hard not to laugh. So Gail Kim comes in and she goes, you know, when you're pushing me aside, if you want tits, I'm right here. If you want talent, I'm right here. She has a point. <laughs> True, she does. And Brooke looks at her and goes, well, it's like, well, Jill, damn it. No, I, I have to do this properly. Well, Jack, let me tell you something there, brother. I'm going to give you a t- I'm going to give you want to wrestle somebody. I'm going to give you a match against Tara tonight, dude. Uh, Tara and <laughs> Gail Kim proceed to suddenly get in each other's faces after ignoring each other the whole time. Yeah, and... Uh, and suddenly it's personal because there's a match involved. And that's yeah, it, it, it turns into a cat fight, you know. But it's not a cat fight in the ring. Because, you know, Gail T- Kim and Tara actually have talent. It, this was actually a decent match. Like I, I was not. Unfortunately, I was kind of horribly distracted by the ref. Uh, First off, you've female never ref. I've never seen a female ref- referee in professional wrestling, just ever, without it being. Guessed. Okay, do you want to know the backstory? Well, I do want to say one thing first. Um, why 
like I understand TNA doesn't exactly have the greatest funds, but why is their female referee buying her uniform from Lover's Package? <laughs> what the holy fuck is she wearing? That's all I could oh. focus on. Sexy when I referee out. It's the sexy referee costume. It's a lesser it known I costume. I sold those fucking things out of Party City. I swear to God, it'll be up at the end of September. Look for it. <laughs> but the backstory is, is that Madison Rain was sleeping with Earl Hebner to get an advantage in her mess- matches. So ta- us, Tara. So Brooke Hogan fired uh, Earl Hebner and brought in her ref, which is... It, she uh, didn't fire him. She just basically said, you're not doing any more fucking uh, knockouts matches, oh, especially if Madison Rain's involved. Have you seen Earl Hebner doing anything since? Yes. He's in the, a match later on tonight. Oh. Well, I'm stupid. Anyways, continue. But, um... So, ba- basically, she brought him in because Madison Rain was... Uh, yeah, was basically abusing the fact that Earl Hebner is a fucking idiot. Mm. <laughs> that does not explain why her tits are hanging out, which must be really difficult to deal with when she's got to, like, slam herself down on the ring to do the count. Just one of these days, Roman's going to pop out and we're going to miss a count because she's trying to get her boob back in. Exactly. Maybe, maybe she enjoys that kind of thing. Sure, that's nice for her exhibitionist streak, but we've got a fucking match to deal with. <laughs> <laughs> and uh well ignoring the ref going back to the talent gail kim and tara this is uh, good it's, this is a good it's problematic to have gail kim playing the heel when tara looks like she could rip out her spine and beat her to death with it <laughs> but they're both talented so they make it work mm. uh let's decent match uh tara nails the widow's peak and Pins Gail Kim, and Gail Kim sells it like she's dead. I don't think we see her move at all, and we never see her again after. So, apparently Gail Kim is now dead. Tara killed her in her quest to become the Knockouts champion. Yeah. um, Which really begs the question, if, well, for both, if Brooke wins or Tara wins, Who's going to be going for the belt? Because the only two relevant ones are the are faces, which is kind of nice for TNA for once in a while. But what heels are there? Rain? Well, she doesn't have her edge, so fuck her. They'll but drag she- back Winter. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! She'll find yeah, somebody else to possess. <laughs> I believe it. I believe it. Where the I fuck's Angelina know? Love anyway? She quit. Oh. The, all the Did music. Well, I didn't know that. Elvis Scott quit. Yeah. Oh. Damn it, she's... It, yeah, there's, there's this webcomic called Botched Spot that does funny uh, wrestling-related webcomics, and they had one for uh, her leaving, which was uh, Taz being sad he can never let the pigeons loose again. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my pigeons got to stay in the park now. <laughs> I'm surprised both of them left. <laughs> well, um, Angelina left because they weren't doing shit all with her because they weren't doing shit all with Winter either. Yeah, they're angry. Yeah, I miss and... my zombie lesbians. <laughs> that was hilarious. I, I actually do miss Winter because she was actually a somewhat decent wrestler. I, I never like used her. It was, was very it was very classy and sexy at the same time, in my opinion. It wasn't stripper gear like they put most of the women in. Like the new ref. Mm-hmm. Or Tara or Miss Sesmager. Or... And I uh, Velvet what day left... would finally happen when they just drop a pole from top, from like above the ring. Well, <laughs> well we've gone back to like 2002 or 2003 when that you used to be something pole that they... on a pole match. <laughs> you climb up there to get a pole. And then you yeah. dance. <laughs> Whoever has the most ones in her fucking shorts at the end of the night wins, and she becomes the knockouts champion. Uh, okay, well l- let's try to think of the knock. Oh, let's just try to quickly to think of who's left in the knockout division. You've got ODB, uh, assuming that who's face. You've got Rosita and Sarita somewhere. You've got Gale. You've got uh, Madison Rain. You've got Mickey James somewhere. Yeah, what, what what happened to Mickey James? Yeah, what the fuck? Uh, 
I, all I know is that she, I think she took off last week or something for her birthday. And she she couldn't attend because she was at throwing herself a birthday party. Like, legitimately, throwing this is the reason that she gave. Party. That just sounds sad. Oh, it is. You have no idea. <laughs> well, I'd rather throw myself a birthday. I'd rather sit at home alone with nothing but ice cream and a big lighter to blow out than actually work on at TNA on my birthday. <laughs> you, uh, duos, you'd rather have that than work at TNA, period. True. You'd rather work at There's sunglasses. There's going to be a marathon of something on somewhere. <laughs> okay, but um, <laughs> I think we've... Let's... Yeah, we, we've, we've driven... They're not going to suck. Let's yes. move on. <laughs> Bury them yeah. six feet under. So speaking we, we of, get... speaking of six feet under, it's Joey Ryan. Yes, they show a video package of all of this gut check crap with Joey Ryan, and what I find funny is that the he's going after the guy who told him yes. <laughs> he's I, like, that's I nice noticed that. that. He's only I going like, after Al Snow. It's like, wait, that was the well, guy that wanted you in. Here's the he here's Kaz? the clear reason why. <laughs> Taz can't wrestle anymore. Yeah, he's got the broken freaking neck. He's wider than he is tall. And Bruce (laughs) Pritchard is Bruce Pritchard. Who's probably not gonna be doing I love you, and that's about it. Who's not gonna be doing any wrestling. So uh, Al had to be the guy who takes because Al can probably still go in the ring. But this is in itself. Richard say yes and Al saying no. Yeah, that's where I was going to go. So you think TNA would think of this? Which is what really surprised me watching the video package is that Pritchard did say yes in the back watching him and Al said no and then they swapped for the final verdict. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, he's he's he said no nominally, pretty much, and then it basically still ran him down. Well, the thing was is that the guy who was doing the most was Taz, which he just said wouldn't work for. Oh my god, this fucking gut check! I they planned this what? shit night. I, I know this is officially the proof. They plan like an hour ahead, <laughs> and then stop and go. Ah, oh, shit, plot hole. Fuck it, they'll never notice. Exactly. <laughs> I Everybody wish Flair was still notices. here. I know Flair went off script all the fucking time. But, but you know... No, you, you the, realize that he might be the one wrestling instead of uh, Snow, right? Yeah, but at least he'd put, he'd put uh, Joey Ryan over. You know, he well, Joey Ryan would probably just have to look at him hard enough and Flair would think that was enough of an excuse to blade. <laughs> Wait, <laughs> Flair needs a reason to blade? I gotta blade. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but um. Anyway, uh, Snow Al Snow come, comes out and he. No, no, I just I got it. Joey Ryan would talk about sleaze, and then Blair would go, "You think that's sleazy? This is sleazy." <laughs> Cut. <laughs> and it's, it's, the, it's a mustache ride that. versus Space Mountain. <laughs> oh God! <laughs> if you're 18 years or over, woo! <laughs> you must be this tall and this old to ride. Allegedly. <laughs> Oh, oh, no, no more. Oh, Back to the segment. <laughs> okay, okay. Ser- seriously, seriously. Uh, so Al Snow's in the ring, and he says that you know, if Joey Ryan wanted to get his attention, well, he's fucking got it. And he says, I know you're here, Joey Ryan. So get your ass out here. You know, security told me you're here. So get your ass out here, so we can talk. <laughs> and Joey Ryan comes out, and he's got a fucking mega megaphone. Five seconds of this guy, and I hated him. And he's like, I'm here. And he's making noise and talking and being obnoxious. And they get him a mic, and he keeps being obnoxious. And acts like a hyper five year old. (laughs) Yeah, yeah, that's. um... A five year old porn star, which is a terrifying thought. Oh my god, why would you ever, ever say that? (laughs) <laughs> because that's what he's acting like. And suddenly, I feel like I'm watching Black Lagoon. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> no one's gonna God get that one. God damn it. Anyway, um, the he's like, "What the fuck do you stuff. want? What the fuck do you want, Ryan?" Ryan's like, "I want what 87 percent of the audience want. Me with a contract. You Crickets. dumb motherfucker." And the crowd's like, 
Boo. Now it's from Left 4 Dead all of a sudden. What the hell's going on? Oh, no, what I loved was when he started everything off with, just feel the energy, crickets. No. And some gave a shit. Like, white crickets and then a smattering of boo. Yeah, here's the problem with online polls. They're dominated by uh, people from ROH. They're dominated by Smarks. Damn it, I'm Google. You ruined my ROH reference. I wanted to one-up Magpie. Well, you can be a fan of ROH and still be a Smark. I didn't complete. (laughs) Really? Anyway, anyway, any okay? I've killed the joke. I'm sorry. I skip. I skip beat it. My bad. I know he's biting at the... He's chomping at the bit to say something, but no! Bad Skippy! Backlash will kill him. <laughs> Backlash will kill me for inciting him. <laughs> but anyway, um, I will kill you all! <laughs> we love you too. So, um... Al Snow says, okay, you want a goddamn contract? Fine. All you have to do is go through gut check one more time. No judges. You win, you get a contract. No, and that's not good enough. Give it to me now. Now, 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 now. Fuck you. Oh, he's, pl- he's playing you the title. You know what? You have a deal. deal. <laughs> he, he goes... He, he basically... Al basically calls him a coward. And Ryan's like, okay, fine. I'll do it. And Al, Al goes, okay, you were wrestling me. <laughs> and immediately Joey Ryan's like, hey, 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 whoa, 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 whoa. This is in the 90s. No one wants to see you in spandex anymore. Which I thought was a great no, line. No one wanted to see him in spandex back then. And he didn't goes, I thought spandex. he was hilarious. He was I was also shirt. Not. No, he he wrestled in. Uh, he he had a doublet. I I was not watching wrestling when he had a doublet because I remember him in a shirt. Yeah. No, and, uh, when he was in um, WWE, he he had a he did have a doublet on. I'm pretty sure. All oh. I remember is head. But um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Al goes, don't worry. I was like, that's fun. I'll whip your ass in jeans. And then he's like, Joey Ryan. Well, this starts off the bitch fest of the century. As Ryan <laughs> dives out of the ring and goes, I'm going to sue. I'm going to sue you. I'm going to sue Dixie Carter. I'm going to own this place. I'm suing. I'm going to sue. And Al's lo- standing in the ring with his look on his face like, oh, for fuck me sake. TNA Impact, starring Joey Ryan. They're ripping off the uh, Brock Lesnar angle with this. Oh, no. Oh, God. (laughs) Anyway, all right. You know what? Here's some good stuff. Joseph Park time. Hooray! Yay! I'm so glad that this character is still around. Yeah, I I am so glad that they realized that Abyss was going to go fucking nowhere, but everybody loves Joseph Park, so they're sticking with that. And so uh, he, he's talking on he, he's uh, he's uh, he's backstage on the phone and he's talking to somebody and up comes Bully Ray and he goes I am I, um, I, I I'll talk to you in a bit he hangs up and he's like don't hurt me and Bully Ray goes hey no 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 look I know we've had our differences in the past but he's like but you know I know you're doing some research for Hogan and the for Hogan and Sting on who the aces and eights are. Oh my god, this sounds worse than last time. <laughs> yeah, I think you're a little too much from the West Coast. I'm, I'm way In too Canada. <laughs> uh, yeah, but we're all on the West Coast. None of us could do a Bronx accent. My name's Bully Ray. Okay, just, sorry. No, just, <laughs> just, <laughs> that's just not no. work. <laughs> Yo, my name is Bully a, Ray. He he a New Yorker. <laughs> He's like, look, I know you're doing research on aces and aids. Have you found out anything? And Joseph Park looks at him and goes, well, Mr. Bully, you do you don't know what uh, client um, what, uh, what attorney client, client privilege? Yeah, is right. I can I can only tell Mr. Hogan and Mr. Sting what I found. And as apparently, soon as I find something, I will let them know. Question. Apparently, go ahead. Which one of them has been missing every time the Aces and Eights have attacked? They, they've all been there at separate times. Like, uh, last week, Samoa Joe was there after being one of the guys got beat up. Uh, to, to, uh, there was a point where everyone... I, I meant between Bully Ray and Joseph Park. 
Oh, Bully Ray's been there all, all the time. Joseph Park has, but he's also not really a wrestler, or that's what they're going for. Joseph and Park is the traitor. Me aces and eights. If we figured it out. Oh my god. I just wanted to if know what the plot is, twist was going to be. If he I would is. love that. I would love Joseph Park to be this fucking evil that ass would, mastermind. That would make me interested in this angle because I've missed almost all of it so I could give a shit. That but, would make me love everything about it. Duos, you missed when it was good and how they ruined it. So it really doesn't matter. But we'll Almost we'll just, uh, to go back. Fuck it. I'll read results. <laughs> um, so Bully, he's like, Bully Ray's like, okay, okay, you know, I, I understand. I, I'm just warning you, you know, I know people like this. Watch your back. And he leaves. And um, a security guard, a guy with a security guard, or uh, the security guard comes in with a guy who doesn't look like the guy who uh, jumped. Uh, who he really doesn't look like the guy who jumped um, Austin Aries last week. He throws him into the room and he's handcuffed and he leaves. It, it's a broom. The alarm bells immediately begin to ring as I realize, oh dear God, not like this. Oh, Massive felony number four: unlawful confinement. We need, we need to do a counter at this point. We're up to four. We're up to four major felonies committed by TNA. This whole God thing is it. only slightly less face palm indu- inducing. I'm 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 convinced that TNA than has this having a torture room in the back. <laughs> Maybe that's where they did it. Maybe like, this TNA is where has uh, it, it's no, it's no, so. It. No no no. This is where Abyss was hiding. You know. <laughs> like T- TNA has its own ju- jurisdiction area that's outside the law. I, I, I can only assume there. they are. <laughs> this is all I can think. Of. I can only think two things. One, this is pushing suspension of disbelief. The Attitude Era is over. This shit just looks stupid now. Two, isn't Aries the face? <laughs> yeah, you think, right? Two more on that. What but, the uh, fuck? Shades of Grey. I, I fired great. him. I really like <laughs> months ago. <laughs> I like Ditch's idea because it also explains how the fuck TNA was able to exile Jarrett to Mexico when he lost his match with Angle. <laughs> I figured out TNA is its own micro nation, like Kickassia. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> oh my god! I want to see Hamera tur- Oh god, no! It would be the ugliest anime character ever. <laughs> High on shit. High on shit. Natalia character. I Trump. want it now. <laughs> Anyways, we get more. It would have to have. He'd have to have a rod in his spine. That's how you'd have to draw it. I don't know how you'd show that, but it'd have to be done. Anyways, speaking of rod in spine, Hulk Hogan once again talking with the tag teams about how much <laughs> they need to take it off Kaz and uh, uh, Daniels. Yeah, he, he asks all of them, you know, give me a reason, and they all give their bullshit reasons. And Hogan basically goes, yeah, uh, Kid Cash and Gunner, fuck you. Uh, because you many steroids. The you anim- your kid no. Cash and Gunner. No, no, no. He goes, the animosity between you, between you guys and Chauvin Hernandez is way too personal. This is a business, brother. And it's like, okay. And this That's... has bearing on Kaz and Daniel's why? Because hey, look over there. <laughs> so <laughs> thankfully this brings us to our next match. Wow, fuck. This is only the third match of the night. We there was a lot of talking, matches. wasn't there? Yeah, this was a return we said matches. this was a return to form for TNA. Oh yeah. But yeah, it's um, Rob Van Dam versus Bully Ray to determine who's going to get the last spot in the uh, Bound for Glory finals. And there, you know, they do a bunch. Of, this was uh, this was actually m- probably one of my favorite matches of the night. I mean, yeah, RVD was in control for a surprising amount of it. And they were going for the whole, well, these guys have known each other for so long, they know all their tricks. And... Uh, RVD is old and boring now. Yes, and Bully Ray is old but hilarious. Yes. Yeah. And anyways, what they the finish was actually something I was not expecting. Uh, 
RVD's coming down with the five star. Bully Ray pops up and smokes him with the bu- Bubba Cutter. Yeah, he what? basically does a fucking uh, Randy Orton. First of all, when's the last time we've seen Bubba pull the Bubba Cutter out? <laughs> uh, a couple weeks ago. He, he has been using it as a finisher l- uh, lately. Okay, it's been a while. For the longest time, he didn't really have a finisher. Unless you count that chain punch he liked to use for a while. Anyways, yeah, he, uh, he diamond cutters him. Don't ever call it an RKO. It's a fucking diamond cutter. He brain uh, him, okay? <laughs> he DDP'd him. There was there was a cutter-like move. It hit on RVD in midair, and Bubba gets the one, two, three. And yes. afterwards, Bubba's selling it more than fucking Rob Van Dam. Get like, <laughs> the fuck off me. It, as I said, it was a pretty good match. Um... I'm just happy that Bully Ray's in the finals instead of RVD. Hmm. Not sure I care yeah. either way. Cause, well, R- RVD just has not innovated over the years. He's he's just got grown stale. At least Bully Ray is, is has changed himself over the years. Hey, Bully he's Ray got fresh. into shape. Remember how yeah. he was a years ago and how he is now? Holy crap. And, well, I'm kind of surprised they had Bully Ray win, honestly, because apparently he is not happy with TNA with the way they treated Devon. But... Yeah, but uh, at the same, like, um, I think he said his contract's up at, by Bound for Glory or something. Which, and so, for all we know, this is just going to be their last row, and he's going to... He'll end up um, losing in the finals. Which, actually... Um, We'll get to that in a second, but um, <clears throat> we go backstage, and Austin Aries has got the Aces and Eights guy, and he's like, "We got all your information right here. Your name's Mike. You're from oh, New God. York. You're a grip. You're a freelance grip." Okay, and, that's fascinating, Austin Aries. He's like, "Who's in the group? And tell me who's in the group. We can do this the easy way or the hard way." And Mike uh, isn't saying anything, so every takes off his coat and he starts slapping him. And he's like, "Tell me, tell me, tell me what I want." Tell any six. Uh, assault. assault. Well, and then it gets better. He grabs a player of pliers and goes, "Do you see these pliers? These are what you almost killed me with." And it's like, "No." Punishment, life imprisonment, massive mayhem on a human body. Holy shit, Austin Aries can go away for a very long time. <laughs> he tries to rip his tongue out on live television. This yes, is face. What the hell? <laughs> there is video He's... evidence of said torture. The aces and eights can go to the police and have TNA shut down permanently. The last time there was a legitimate case against anybody was Abyss. What, I'm thinking of the whole Dixie Carter thing, and well, well okay. Uh, apparently, buying judges is easy, even when you know. There is no fucking way you could possibly win. <laughs> that is true. Apparently, they just a personal friend, the personal friend of Dixie's family, decided that the thing was is that he wasn't even bought off. He bought no. It was the argument was it wasn't fraud because she signed the paper in front of millions of people. That was their defense, and the judge bought it because apparently she's too okay. stupid to read it. Because apparently appeals don't exist in the U.S. court system. Okay, I, the only way I can see that working is if they went, she was too stupid to read it, but she signed it anyway. <laughs> but, uh, no, so, Aries is about to rip out the guy's tongue, and Hogan comes in and goes, hey, 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 this isn't what I said you could do. And Aries immediately goes, yes, it is. <laughs> I, I was just like, holy shit! Uh, Hogan's the voice of reason here. He's asked. this doesn't last long. Oh, but then, but then, then Hogan Start slaps smacking. the guy with the most <laughs> unconvincing slap, and then he tries to poke out his eye. A second <laughs> take of massive mayhem on a human body. Another life sentence. <laughs> and, Damn it! Uh, and you know we're reaching billions of dollars worth of uh, financial. 
liability for TNA. This guy could own Panda Energy. <laughs> but no, no, no. That's not what they're going to do because Logic, what are you doing? Eight? Eight? No, no. Eight your felonies. Stop, stop. You're applying Logic to a TNA angle. Think about what you're doing. Hey, eight felonies. Aces and eights. Motherfuckers. <laughs> It was all planned. But, so, <laughs> like Hogan, never be that Hogan abruptly gets a phone call. Uh, get, um, Hogan gets I, a phone call. And I was hoping the police. What's up, brother? Yeah, no. Oh, you're the vice president of Aces and Eights, huh? <laughs> Aces and Eights has the vice president. Fuck. Anyway, he goes, <laughs> look, I'll make you a deal. We'll give you back Mike... If you send if a guy, if you send the guy who broke Ares's arm down to the ring alone before the end of the night, and the and Ares and him will have a fight at no surrender, and I guess whoever's on the other end of the line is like, okay, sure. Well, the thing is, is that also his name literally just becomes Armbreaker. That's what they call him. That's yeah, his, they call him <laughs> the Armbreaker. <laughs> He's just Armbreaker, which is. I personally would have wished that my wrestling name was Pile Driver, but we can't always get what we want. Can't always get what you need. But yeah, so apparently Aces and Eights cares quite deeply about Mike because they don't just laugh at Hogan's threat and tell him to have fun with him like a normal gang would. Well, I I actually have a make any sense. I actually have a later. I actually do have a theory about this, but we'll get to that in a bit. Um. So Hogan's like, okay, Ares, let him live. And then he punches him one more time for good measure and leaves. Yeah. So let him live. Let him live. <laughs> implying that they were going to murder this man. Our baby faces were going to commit murder against a guy that was probably paid off. Uh, apparently th- that was apparently they did not want about seven life sending charges against them, that's just a bit too much for us to handle. Wait, no, this is Florida. If you kill him, that's probably death. <laughs> Apparently, it's, Hogan did not want to face the death penalty. It's Florida. It'd probably end up on what the fuck is wrong yeah, with but you. No, 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 no. He didn't say don't kill him ever. Just let him live until they fuck up this bargain and then you can kill him. <laughs> we are now okay. in the mafia. <laughs> What the fuck? Wait, wait, wait. wait. Don Hogan has called off the hit. I got it. This is how they're going to bring it back. The main event mafia. (laughs) Wow. Figuring out all the good stuff tonight, aren't we? (laughs) Okay. Uh, uh, Anyway, uh, let's... uh... Okay, I think I can hear mild annoyed uh, simmering. But, um, okay, so James Thorne goes out to the ring, and he's like, to, you know, 2012 has been a lot of highs. There's been a lot of lows. Because at the start of the year, I was going for the championship. And then I got re- I didn't think I could get any lower until I lost at lockdown. And I felt really, really done to myself. And I went home and I drank. I spent time with my family. And I realized something was wrong because I loved the crowd. I came back at Slammiversary and I beat Crimson and sent him to OVW. <laughs> Hooray! And I got into the BFG series, and I'm awesome, and me, me, me. And I know there's three other guys in the back who are like, who's he going to pick? So let's get him out here. As much as I'm liking, well, before this show anyway, Ares as champion, it really doesn't make sense that they're kind of keeping with this redemption thing for Storm when Rude doesn't have the belt anymore. Yeah, and and where the fuck is Rude? He's been absent for like the three... Last well, week. he can't be in the uh, he can't be going for the title because he f- fucking made that stupid you only get one more shot deal which okay I kind of wish they'd do that at WWE once in a while <laughs> but so he's no, got nothing done to that do at WWE and then they just decide oh nope it doesn't count for whatever reason and then do it again so that won't stick still hope he's the new RVD that's what's happening here. <laughs> We're going to be hearing about this bullshit in a year. <laughs> oh. But, um... <clears throat> so, 
Then um, he's like, so out comes uh, Bully Ray and Jeff Hardy and Samoa Joe. And he's like, you know, there's some great competitors up there. There's Joe and there's Jeff Hardy. But I'm going to wrestle Bully Ray because that motherfucker accused me of being the leader of Aces and Eights. So fuck him in the ass. You know, he screwed me over last year at last year's no, uh, at th- in the finals of last year's Bound for Glory series. So this year I'm going to fuck him in the ass and <laughs> go on to win. Fucking hell. But you know what? Oh. Go on with that. This, this is quite incredible. This is continuity in TNA. Serious continuity. Yeah, I don't even remember yeah, we'll the see Bound how long for Glory series last he year. He has legitimate reasons to want to fight Bully Ray, and he's bringing them up. Wow! And hopefully, maybe this is hope against hope, this also ends with Jeff Hardy tapping out to, like, one of Joe's 80 submissions. Hopefully he puts them all on at the same time. I don't know how that would work, but Joe could do it. Kaji Bunshin no Shadow Clone Jutsu. <laughs> <laughs> That's the only way Samojo can pull it off. <laughs> yeah, I me am no speak good. Uh, but yeah, so we get fuck it is. so the finals of the Bound for Glory series are Storm versus a Bully and Joe versus Hardy. I have to admit, I am surprised that this Bound for Glory series has seriously been great. I have to say it. The right people have been getting pushed. I'd rather see the Pope not have to leave with nine fucking points when everybody else is at least in the low thirties, but. I guess he's gone, and oh, yeah, that's I don't want to. I saw the Pope's name at the bottom. What? Holy shit! He still works there. I don't think he does. <laughs> I think that injury thing is was him leaving. And why is it, he on the? How did he get points? I, he I, won a match. He won a match. Oh. Okay, take, take it. Look at it like this. Robbie E got more points than him. <laughs> Robbie E. Robbie Damn, E. Damn, that's low. Ouch. <sighs> well, I'm sad. <laughs> yes, so am I. Anyway, so after that, we have Christy Hemming with RVD backstage and basically like saying, oh, you fucking lost. That must suck, right? Basically, Christy Hemming being a ditz is probably the best way to describe this. Christy Hemming being Christy Hemming. Mm. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. I might have missed some of the intros. Did they did they do the pan up Christie's legs? They already did that. Hooray! Did that. <laughs> but yeah, so RVD's sort of like blah, 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 blah. And then the troll shows up. <laughs> uh Maggie. Hi R V D, did you lose your match? Oh man, that sucks. I'm just gonna you're talk about old. that for a while. It's like I was really hoping you'd say something like you know, if you laid off the pot, you probably would have won. They should make him like the ultimate concern troll. Yes. Like saying stuff like, you know, Storm, if you drank less, you probably would have won that title. Just walk up to Hulk and, man, Hulk, I, I really don't think you should be in the business anymore. I mean, I know you're just the GM, but I'm getting really worried. I mean, this Ace is Nate's thing. Your old heart just can't take this shit. Oh I'm my just, god, I'm it would be the greatest you. thing. What <laughs> happens if they, like, cut off, like, say, Nick Hogan while he's driving in his... Oh, that's right, I'm sorry. Oh. Okay, but, but um... Oh. But no, they, uh... They pretty much point out <laughs> that, um... Uh... Magnus basically goes, Yeah, you're getting really old. Maybe you should... You know, you're not as good as you used to be. Maybe you should quit. And RVD goes, Fuck you! And they start fighting. And apparently it's broken up by Al Snow and D'Lo Brown. The, the two guys that got inexplicably over at last year's Pound for Glory. Let's go, D'Lo. Which I only think that was because they were in Philadelphia and the crowd was just being dickholes. And, but TNA's too stupid to realize that, so they keep putting both of them out there. <laughs> and I, I hate saying that because I don't mind D'Lo or Al Snow. It's just... Outside of the Smarks, do you think anybody even remembers what they look like? Well, they clearly remember Al Snow because he keeps coming out every month. <laughs> yeah, but who, what, 
Who watches TNA except the Smarks? They they apparently have everyone fa- who did, everyone fa- who doesn't want to deal with the lines at Universal Studios. <laughs> yeah, and you, you know, know at least ten percent of their audience is people that went, man, fuck these lines. Hey, this is sh- <laughs> there's no line here at all. Eric and here. Be- well, apparently it's, more, it's a lot more than that because a lot of the old fans who used to go all the time stopped re- uh, a couple of years ago, so it could be up to 50. But anyway, so uh, we get our main event. It is time for the World Tag Team title match of Christopher Daniels and Frank Kazarian taking on Chavo Guerrero and Hernandez. Oh, I was I actually felt kind of legitimately bad for poor uh, for the poor Robbies just because I that would have been funnier. Yeah, I is Robbie this, oh, probably Robbie T could have probably ate Christopher Daniels. So if Hogan wanted to get rid of them, that would have been the logical choice. I actually <laughs> would like to point out something. Robbie D has some really nice tits. <laughs> Oh, I don't know if you noticed, but when they're doing the backstage segments and he had that sweater on, he has some nice bosoms. <laughs> Apparently, what? he's still no, wearing that thing. Sure. What I want to know is why is Robbie E dressed normally, but Ro- but Big Robbie is stuck in just his fucking trunks and the boyfriend sweater. The boyfriend <laughs> sweater. I think, I think it's a boyfriend. It's card. It's a fucking cardigan or some shit. It, it, it's, it's it's for girls, for one thing. Like I, I'm not usually one to do that, but those sweaters are marketed towards women. It's douche gear. That's all. It's they're based off. They're douche gear. Let's just leave it at that. Shit, if we're going so, that route, let's dress them like Bro Strider. <laughs> oh my god. Anyway, oh. so uh, we also discover that Chavo Guerrero and Hernandez have no chemistry. I don't. Huh. The, there is one cool thing where Chavo do, um, goes up and he does the fucking um, Hurricane Rana off the top rope and he sends Hernandez flying down into, I think it's, um, I think it's Kaz. Um, yeah, it's Kaz. Yep. And that that was kind of cool, but uh, yeah, they've, they're really not it, that great together. Interesting. It was actually a point that... Except it's a bra- horribly, overly showy and unnecessary. <laughs> yeah, it, the, it was, not, it was just like somebody... It was what Robbie E. pointed out. They might have been, you know, great tag team champions bef- in the past, but not with each other. <laughs> At least Hernandez yeah. didn't stiff the fuck out of anybody during this match. <laughs> well, didn't, no. You he, know how they don't let him do that fucking border toss anymore? Oh my god. Yeah, they, they probably told him to cut that shit out. Like, apparently, after he almost murdered freaking, uh, Mag- not Magnus, uh, Douglas Williams with it, you haven't seen it again. <laughs> yeah. I, yeah, even TNA decided, after a while just goes, huh. I guess they decided that dangerous. giving a man who's already stiff a move that was the move that caused fucking Draws Dragon to break his neck was not the best idea. <laughs> Fucking that. A, a throwing power bomb that lands the guys on his shoulders and neck. Uh, what could possibly go wrong? But, um, so yeah, um, ma- match ends when uh, Hernandez goes for the border toss and Daniels whacks him in the gut with, the t- with one of the tag belts. And uh, he get, um, Kaz goes for the roll up for the, for the win. And they're they're in the ring and they're like, yeah, we all smarted him. We're smart. And Hogan comes out and he's like, bra fucking vo. <laughs> well, since you won your match tonight, I've got a match for you at No Surrender, brother. It's gonna be you two against AJ Styles and Kurt Angle. <gasps> and at, when he finishes announcing this match, he gets fucking pyro. Yeah, that's right. What? He got yeah, that was him. weird. He well, he <laughs> yeah, that's he right. To... His fucking pyro started to go off. Well, Hogan was like still in the middle of it. Like, holy fuck, that's dangerous. And then he starts to turn around and he's got his arms stretched out. And part of me is going, and he's just doing that because his back's about to give out on him. 
<laughs> and I'm just like, once once again, they had this entire useless go nowhere storyline. What and I want to know is just to give us the the big reveal. Oh, he's gonna fight AJ and Kurt Angle. Question. Go ahead. If Hogan's top pick failed, why did the second pick not go up next? Why did we immediately jump to let's grab that guy I told to fuck off and pair him with some random guy? Well, because his entire well, reason from telling him to fuck really off was get a partner. Off them guys. Why didn't he book them in a, they have to get ten falls, but the other team only has to get one fall match? Because Hogan's apparently not that big of a dick. <laughs> oh, I, I, I've been corrected. He's, it's he's not entirely still, random because they're old tag team partners for when they had the title for a fucking week. I mean, uh, you know, well Hogan might be a heel. Hogan might be a heel. Let's face he's it, he's a heel. To be. <laughs> he, he's supposed to be faced, but he's a goddamn heel. Uh, but but even he's not evil enough to be like, okay, uh, I'm gonna fuck you guys over so hard, it comes out your mouth. Hey, that doesn't involve oh. Wait, oh. <laughs> Wait, oh. <laughs> I have seen too many things where that happens, and I'm not going can... to wait on that. So I. <laughs> joke here, but I won't. Uh, uh, but yeah, so that's uh, the big reveal. Fucking. Kurt Angle, like, who gives a shit about Kurt Angle now? Really? Kurt yeah, Angle. What the fuck is the Angle Kurt the Angle gives a shit about Kurt Angle. He's just the only one who gives a shit about Kurt Angle. You know, I, 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 I'm going to go the Olympics know? with... Oh my god, that Olympic thing. Holy <laughs> fuck, that Olympic thing. I did like the col- the uh, college humor, or whatever it was, uh, when they were making fun of that. Where he Coach didn't make it wrestling. Made a video about that. Yes, they actually got ho- they actually got Kurt Angle and RVD to do a video uh, where it's like Kurt didn't make it for the wrestling team, so he ha- so they had him try out for other Olympic teams. <laughs> you know what? I think Kurt Angle. I don't know if you guys saw during the Olympics. Did you see any of the water polo games? No. Kurt Angle would be great at water polo. I even think that was one of the things. Looking psychotic. (laughs) No, because (laughs) apparently uh, you can't touch the other. Like, here's the thing about water polo: there's so the penalties come so often in that they don't even stop play to deal with a penalty. So apparent, like, apparently Kurt Angle could still be an Olympic sport, but never have to do anything because he just keep getting himself penalties. But anyway, so yeah, we closed with, uh, no, that's not how we closed, was it? There was something No, else. no so, there was one more thing. Yeah, so, so Austin oh, Aries oh. drags out Mike. Oh my fucking God. <sighs> and he's got Mike in the ring and he's like, okay, where are you, arm breaker? Where are you? You better hurry or I'm going to forget about our deal and start torturing this guy again to get the information I want. In front of a live studio audience this time, so it's you're not coming out. Illegal. <laughs> it's like you're not coming out. Okay, murder time. And he, he, <laughs> he's about out of to, this guy now. He's about okay. First of all, I like to point out Austin Aries keeps using his damn hand for um his right hand for uh for things. Like he he used it for the mic. I think he hit the guy once or twice with his right hand. <laughs> it's like, you know, we um, jerk off with. It's like, hey, hey, Austin, injured arm. <laughs> but so he's about to. So Mike's like, okay, okay, I'll tell you, I'll tell you everything. And he's like, good, start talking. And he pushes the mic up to his mouth, and the arm breaker appears. He pulls him out of the ring. And it's like, well, it's about time you showed up. And arm breaker's got a ball peen hammer. And he looks up at Aries, and then he whacks Mike in the head with it. I don't like, think they really gave that much of a shit about Mike. Yeah, no, no they didn't. They yeah. just didn't. Okay, the entire my entire theory about Obviously why they not. were willing to do this is twofold. One, they get to injure Austin Aries some more at the pay per view, and two, they get they keep Mike from blabbing his fucking guts out. This is quickly well, becoming if, dueling mob. If so, like the thing is, Ace and the Nates is supposed to be a biker gang. Anybody who knows about biker gangs, even tangentially, will know 
that if you have one of their members, they're going to probably kill him first just to be on the safe side. So this fucking stupid of, oh, we're going to, you know, fuck him up if you don't come out and do our... Hogan, you're a fucking moron. It's not exactly very effective. No. So the mob versus the Hells Angels. Got it. Yeah, that's so, basically a good way to look at it. But yeah, also, I'd like to point out, it, it, I think he actually did hit him with that hammer, and it was fucking unprotected, because Mike went down like a sack of shit. Yeah, that did not look like it went very well. I was a little no. concerned, but I don't think so, he was bleeding. Well, he, he also had his arms tied behind his back, so he couldn't brace himself as he fell. Yeah. <laughs> Like That's a always sack dangerous. Of Let's shit. just hope that Mike doesn't have brain damage. <laughs> so, I'm sure that's what TNA has been doing. Just oh shit, hope that's not a lawsuit waiting to happen. Everything. <laughs> oh so, wow, he really might get all the panda fucking energy. <laughs> <laughs> oh wow. So anyway, uh, Armbreaker turns towards the ring. Here goes Austin Aries. He dives out and he whacks him. And again, I think he whacked him with his right arm first. He's like, <laughs> you fucking idiot. So they He's start so- punching each other. They get in the ring and they're still punching each other. And, and they're punching. The Armbreaker has no problem using his <laughs> hammer on Mike, but he can't do it on Aries because... I think Aries he... Lo- I think he- they need him for later. <laughs> Whereas kind Mike of- got his paycheck and that's the last we'll ever see of him. No, no, no. It's actually quite simple. Um, When he got hit... He uh, he dropped it. It's kind of like one of those beat 'em ups where you hit them enough times so they drop their weapon. Uh, oh, and then it just of course. Pushes it to the fucking ether. Yeah, well, at these. So bombs. I don't know about everyone else, but since they ran over, my recording cut off pretty quickly. But part of the it, result, it, it ended on brawling. Yeah. It, it, it they basically cut cut the cut camera while they were still fighting and it's like they're trying to hype up oh they're gonna fight on the pay per view we're gonna find out who it is it's Luke Gallows <laughs> it's Festus it they've even recent he even recently announced that he finally signed a contract with them which is funny because he's been working with them for a while now yeah that's TNA style they like to have you there for a couple months before they sign you so apparently you can rikishi the fuck out of them. <laughs> yeah, um, that if anybody gets it. that reference. Anyway, that was Impact. Now, this would normally be the part where I'm like, okay, let's just get the rest of this shit over. But there's actually something we need to do. The fucking card for the pay-per-view. Oh, my God. Uh, I got in front of me. No I surrender. Completely, Good. I completely it's forgot it. about that show, and we just talked about it two minutes ago. Good work, TNA. <sighs> so... Let's go. I, I can only assume that these have been laid out in most important to least important. Important. So let's go backwards and start with the knockouts. <laughs> <laughs> Knockout right. champion Tara versus Miss Tessmacher. Tessmacher is holding the championship. Um, um I'm gonna say Tessmacher's gonna win. Yeah, I'm thinking they're gonna stick with her. I'm gonna say Tessmacher so they can turn Tara heel. Ooh. That I. Think that the, one of them's going to turn heel. It's probably going to be Tara, but they might do the thing where Tara wins. She's all like, "Oh, I won, but you're still my bestie." She's just like, "Fuck you!" Slap. No, I think I'd rather see Tara go heel. Yeah, that seems more logical. But this is TNA we're talking about. Damn it! He brings up a good point. Yeah. So, but I'm still going to go with uh, t- uh, Brooke wins. Tess Walker. Okay. So I think we're uh, unanimous there. Yep. Next up, X Division Championship: Sanjay Dutt versus Zima Ion. I've never heard of that guy. Oh, Where the fuck is Ion? Those the two guy. Whoa, 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 whoa! When the hell did they make this match? No kidding! I haven't seen <laughs> last the X night. Division. They announced no. it last night. They, yeah, they announced it. They announced it last night. They didn't. There was no hype for this match beyond that. Before that. I didn't no, even know they mentioned it once. I didn't even know fucking Dutt was back with the company full time. Unless yeah, he, he, did I. He, he was, was a couple I weeks on. ago. Or he was a couple months ago when they were doing the okay, who's gonna uh, when they made Austin Aries be like, okay, who's gonna wrestle Zima Ion? Because he was one of the guys in uh, who was in there. Oh well, I'm gonna go with. They haven't uh, done shit with the X Division. I'm really, gonna say. So. I'm going to say Zima Ion retains because they have no... Because they're clearly not going to do anything until Soros did return, so they can do that feud. Mm. 
Ion. Yeah, Zima Ion. They're not yeah, Ion. Give it to Dot. Fuck that. Ion, come on. Unanimous Ion. Now, this just tickles me pink because I have a theory. Uh-oh. Magnus versus Rob Van Dam. Before we start, my theory Rob was so pissed, he immediately went to Hogan and said, I want a fucking match with that asshole. <laughs> ASAP. And Hogan went, yeah, we got an empty slot. <laughs> All right, that's, uh... Well, you, you forgot the most important part. Here's oh. some weed. <laughs> <laughs> It'll help you with that <laughs> prosthetic <laughs> spine, uh, dude. But, um, <laughs> I'm gonna say RVD. I mean, I'm gonna, because... yeah, I'm gonna say RVD. I, my mind tells me RVD because this is TNA and nothing ever changes. But I want to see Brutus Magnus, the super concerned troll, win. And then go on like a promo saying that, you know, if you didn't do pot, you probably would have had a better chance to beat me. I'm going to go with Magnus. You really good this, man. You had it good, but you just kind of faded out there at the end. And <laughs> you kind of look hungry. Know why. <laughs> yeah, I want him to become this super moralizing concern troll. That'll never happen, but damn, that'd be fun as hell. Mm-hmm. Uh, is that everybody on that? Yeah. yeah. Okay. So, World Tag Team Championship. AJ Styles and Kurt Angle versus Daniels and Kazarian. AJ and Kurt, because they don't have anything to do with Daniels and Kazarian now that they killed the uh, soap opera feud. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. I would like to point out. It, I would like to point out it would be completely within TNA's scope of fucking shit up and dragging things out more for <laughs> Kaz and Daniels to win. So I'm going to say them. It's I'm just going to be full out. They're going to do something stupid to spite us. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised. Neither would I. I'm going to have to go with AJ and Kurt. So we got three AJ and one Daniels. Okay, next up... First of the two Bound for Glory, well, first of the three Bound for Glory series matches. Semi-final, James Storm versus Bully Ray. Storm. Storm. I'm going to have to go with Storm because Storm. Storm. <laughs> you nasty, you nasty Storm. Sorry, Bully Ray. We may, we may like you, but we don't even think TNA is that bad at booking. Oh, no, no, no. I do. It's just... Uh, th- it's this a little is obvious this where this is going. Storm's... Go- yeah, it's it, it's obvious. I wouldn't be surprised if Storm wins the final match. Unless... Well, unless, well see, like I said, the problem is, is that they're still building up the Storm to the ultimate confrontation with Rude, even though Rude doesn't have the belt. I got it. Rude cost him the finals. Ooh... Yeah, oh, no. Oh, no. 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 Dun, dun, dun. I can see that happening. Okay. Well, the other I don't like it. Is Jeff versus um, it's Jeff versus uh, Samoa Joe, right? I'm gonna yeah. say, for, well, for that. I'm gonna say but, Jeff Hardy by submission. <laughs> I'm gonna say Jeff Hardy, not by submission, but Jeff Jeff Hardy, because then they'll have Storm versus Hardy in the main event, and Storm or er, Hardy will win that because Rude screws over Storm. And here's the thing. They will redo uh, Bound for Glory 2010. <laughs> oh, no. Fuck. Oh, my God. I don't think oh, I saw shit. that. Oh, oh my God. God. Oh, my. It's been building up to that. It's been the slow burn. <sighs> After that, I assume, is the... Bound for Glory series final, which obviously they can't actually put names on yet. And then finally, we have the World Heavyweight Champion Austin Aries challenges anyone from Aces and Eights, which I would imagine will turn into everyone from Aces and Eights. They were, and they were lose horribly. I think they were specifying that it'll it will be the arm breaker. That was the that was the entire point of their deal with get, I think with it'll start out that way. Like, It'll start well, out with them, it, it'll, it'll turn be into a, a cluster. fight, it, and then it'll be a beatdown, and then more people will come out. And They will reveal, who, at the very least, who the arm breaker is, and it'll just get people wondering. It'll, it'll Somebody will go, oh my god, is the WWE invading us? Because that's a former WWE guy. Oh my fuck. 
You, you think because we don't have tons of those running around. Yeah, <laughs> they have the balls to try to NWO this. Oh I, my god! Oh god! god. Hogan will. So, okay, here's my prediction for Bound for Glory because I probably won't be on the show for. Uh, I might not be on the show leading up to it. Hogan will turn heel. Jeff Hardy will turn heel. Aces and Ace will be their little army, and it will be a con- and it will be 2010 all over again. <laughs> uh, so you're saying God this is gonna be like so in other words this is exactly like WCW or 1998 when they wanted to do 1996 all over again because you know 2000 or 2010 uh, was such a great business year for TNA or no 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 or the other way you could look at it they're going to try to relive the screw job over and over and over that must and be the over, reason why they over. hired Hebner, so they could do the screw job angles with him. Because apparently, no other ref is corrupt but Hebner. Well, I could get Nick Patrick, but I don't. I don't even know what he's doing. Uh, but, uh, I think he's retired. He's flat out retired. Oh well, then in that case, yeah, they can't really get him. But that's Impact. That's the lead up to No Surrender. Um, let's let's wrap this show up. What gets more screen time than Jay Lethal? <laughs> Costumes from Party City. Get more screen time than Jay Lethal. Yep. Numerous life imprisoning felonies get more screen time Fuck. than Jay Lethal. Part of the course. <laughs> uh, really Rocky. badly botched uh, Anaconda devices that just look like headlocks get more screen time than Jay Al. Than Jay Al? Yeah. <laughs> Holy shit! Just zone out on us there for a sec. <laughs> Robbie T's man tits get more screen time than Jay. <laughs> oh, damn! Get a, they get a lot of screen time. <laughs> <laughs> but um, that's it for the dark match. Uh, don't forget to subscribe to us on Blip TV or YouTube to keep up to date with all of our videos. You can like us on Facebook. Don't forget to follow us on Twitter at Dark Match Wrestling. You can follow us individually on Twitter as well. Don't forget to check out TRE Reductors for all of our videos, plus lots of other great stuff hosted. We're on ReviewTopia in the community section. And we're also on the Spoonie Experiment forums where you can come in and talk to us and, uh, so, and maybe some of us will be nice. I don't know. I don't really pay attention. Anyway, I am the Lord Warrior. <laughs> and I'm Digi Fox. I'm the fox that rocks your socks. I'm Duo's Angel. And I'm the Revolver Man. Good night. Good luck. Yeah.